Yellowstone in northwest Wyoming, land of geysers, mountains, and lakes, is also sitting atop a supervolcano. Supervolcano, which erupts roughly every 600 million years. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone. Yellowstone, currently a hotbed of discussion among scientists, media, and the public alike, has been making headlines due to recent notable activities and its potential for catastrophic impact. World-renowned physicist Michio Kaku has recently issued a startling revelation. Yellowstone is set to erupt in 2023, and this could be the end of it all. This dynamic Yellowstone caldera is a living entity that occasionally shows its power. Its past eruptions, enormous events that have significantly shaped Earth's environment, make it an object of both reverence and fear. As we delve into the intricacies of the supervolcano, We'll explore why the understanding and monitoring of this colossal entity are more pertinent today than ever before. Throughout Earth's lifetime, it's believed that the Yellowstone supervolcano has erupted three times. These massive events, happening 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and about 664,000 years ago, each let out a huge amount of ash and gases that affected the whole world. The last eruption even created a massive depression known as the Yellowstone Caldera, covering 34 by 50 miles. This is a vivid testament to the sheer power of the supervolcano. These eruptions didn't just change the landscape, but they also made big changes to the world's climate. Knowing about these past eruptions makes it clear why it's so important to keep close watch on what's happening at Yellowstone now. Over the past few months and years, we've seen some incredibly alarming and odd things happening around Yellowstone. One of the weirdest things? A big crack, as long as a football field, suddenly appearing out of nowhere. This crack, more than 100 feet long, is a visible sign of the unseen forces working beneath the ground we walk on. It's a powerful reminder of the red-hot magma and gushing fluids that bubble underneath Yellowstone, causing changes on the surface. Speaking of magma, scientists have started to notice something they call recharging. This is the process of new magma pouring into the underground reservoir beneath Yellowstone, filling it up. This new magma replaces old magma that has cooled down and turned solid since the last time the supervolcano blew its top. When this reservoir gets full enough and the pressure gets high enough, it can trigger an eruption. A bigger reservoir means a bigger eruption, which could be a big problem for us. Another major odd event that has been occurring is with the geysers of Yellowstone. The steamboat geyser, the tallest one in the world, has been busier than ever, going off more times than we've ever seen before. Then there's the Excelsior geyser. It was quiet for decades, since 1957 in fact. Then out of the blue, it started erupting again. And it wasn't just water it was spewing out. It also threw up junk that people had thrown in way back in the 1930s. Both events are incredibly unusual and raise questions about what's happening below Yellowstone. Along with all this geyser activity, there's been a lot of shaking going on. Earthquakes. Lots of them. Over a hundred in just one month. Each quake might be small, but together they could be a sign of something bigger happening deep underground. But that's not all. The ground at Yellowstone has been slowly rising, year after year. This isn't just a bit of swelling. It could be a sign of more magma or heated water building up below, pushing the ground upward. Each year, the ground rises a few centimeters, and recently, this is becoming more and more noticeable. According to Dr. Michio Kaku, a renowned physicist, Yellowstone is going to erupt in 2023. He's been predicting the eruption for over a decade now. But at the same time, he thinks that we shouldn't worry too much, as we'll get advanced warnings before the eruption. It's possible that all these signs could be the warnings that he was talking about. There's one thing that they tell us for sure. This giant is not dead, just sleeping. While we don't know if or when it'll wake up, we need to keep a close eye on it. That's why scientists are watching Yellowstone carefully, learning as much as they can so that we can be ready if the volcano ever decides to wake up. One major science administration that has proposed a bold solution to prevent this upcoming disaster is NASA. Their solution involves drilling up to 10 kilometers deep into the sides of the vast magma chamber under the park and pumping in high-pressure water to cool it down. 
It's a daring plan, certainly not devoid of risk, but one born of necessity. The thinking behind this plan is that by extracting heat from the rocks, it could not only prevent the super eruption, but also create a new source of geothermal energy. This is an attractive proposition. The power produced could be significant, capable of supplying electricity on a large scale, potentially for thousands of years. It's an innovative approach to mitigating a natural hazard that could also yield a valuable renewable energy source. However, as with any audacious plan, the risks and challenges are substantial. The most immediate concern is the potential for the drilling process itself to induce the very disaster it's trying to prevent. It's a scary situation. By trying to prevent a super eruption, we might inadvertently trigger one. Drilling into a supervolcano and disturbing the tenuous geological balance. That is a risky proposition. And that's why NASA's plan calls for drilling from the lower sides of the volcano, not directly above the magma chamber, to minimize the risk. Besides, the technical challenges of drilling into such a formidable geologic structure are significant. We're talking about penetrating kilometers of hard rock under extreme heat and pressure conditions, a task that pushes the limits of current drilling technology. And then there's a matter of cost. The initial estimate is $3.46 billion, a hefty price tag, but one that's justified if it means averting a global catastrophe. Even if the plan were successfully implemented, it wouldn't provide an instant fix. Given the colossal size of the Yellowstone magma chamber, it would take hundreds, if not thousands of years to cool it down enough to mitigate the eruption threat significantly. It's a long-term solution to a long-term problem. Along with some other proposed solutions, dealing with the Yellowstone supervolcano's potential threat is a complex task that requires innovative approaches and cutting-edge technology. One intriguing tool scientists are using to study the supervolcano is deuterium, a stable isotope of hydrogen. Deuterium is used to track and understand the movements of underground water and gases. This, in turn, helps in understanding the movement and evolution of magma, which is integral in predicting potential eruptions. This isotope acts as a tracer, giving us a unique insight into the internal dynamics of the magma system and its potential changes over time. Essential to this ongoing study is the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, or YVO, a collaborative initiative that unites scientists from around the globe. The observatory plays a key role in monitoring the supervolcano, utilizing an array of instruments to track geological activity. From ground-based stations to satellite imagery, the YVO employs advanced technology to gather data around the clock. Seismometers monitor the constant rumblings of the Earth, detecting the slightest shift in the tectonic landscape. Meanwhile, other instruments track temperature fluctuations in the park's geothermal features, providing vital information about the changes happening beneath the Earth's surface. Another crucial component of the observatory's work is a study of volcanic gases. These gases, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and water vapor, among others, offer vital clues about the supervolcano's behavior. By analyzing the gases, scientists can discern changes in the magma chamber's behavior, another key to predicting eruptions. Should the supervolcano awaken, the effects would be devastating on a scale we've never seen in modern history. The immediate vicinity would bear the brunt of this catastrophic event, the eruption would spew enormous amounts of ash and pyroclastic material, with some estimates suggesting the northern Rockies could be buried under a layer of ash three feet deep. This would transform landscapes into desolate, lifeless expanses, burying towns and cities and annihilating all life forms in the region. But the fallout of such an eruption extends far beyond the immediate vicinity. This cloud of ash, dispersed by winds, could reach as far as the Midwest, depositing inches of ash and dust in its wake. While less thick than at the source, this ash would still have the potential to cause enormous disruption to ecosystems and human life. Plants and animals could be smothered, potentially leading to a collapse of local food chains. For humans, the fallout could damage lungs and cause respiratory problems, while buildings could collapse under the weight of accumulated ash. The ash cloud wouldn't just disrupt life on the ground, it could also bring air travel across North America to a standstill. With ash particles causing potential engine failures and reduced visibility, flights might be grounded for an indefinite period, causing widespread disruption and even economic crisis. 
The ash could also interfere with power lines and transformers, causing power outages and impacting communications and other essential services. The damage wouldn't only be local. The global consequences of Yellowstone super eruption would extend far beyond the physical destruction of landscapes and infrastructure. One of the most profound effects would be the Earth's climate. These catastrophic eruptions can thrust vast quantities of sulfur aerosols into the atmosphere, fundamentally altering the planet's climate. The mechanism behind this is quite straightforward. When sulfur dioxide gas is ejected into the stratosphere, it reacts with water to form sulfate aerosols. These microscopic particles have a reflective property, effectively bouncing solar radiation back into space and creating a cooling effect on the planet. Essentially, a volcanic eruption could trigger a sort of global volcanic winter. Historically, this has been observed on a smaller scale with the eruptions of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines in 1991 and Mount Tambora in Indonesia in 1815. In the case of Mount Pinatubo, the release of sulfur dioxide led to a significant drop in global temperatures, estimated to be about 1 degree Celsius over the following year. The Tambora eruption was even more extreme, resulting in the infamous Year Without a Summer in 1816, where temperatures dropped worldwide, leading to widespread crop failures and famines. If Yellowstone were to follow in these volcanoes' footsteps, the effects could be more pronounced due to the much larger volume of sulfur aerosols potentially released. Agricultural systems across the globe could be severely disrupted, with cooler temperatures and reduced sunlight hampering crop growth. This could lead to food shortages and socio-economic instability. Additionally, global ecosystems could be thrown into disarray as species struggle to adapt to rapid, significant shifts in climate. And while these impacts are daunting, they show the importance of understanding, monitoring, and preparing for the potential eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. Thanks for watching. Feel free to drop your thoughts down in the comment section below.